Rolex releases 2024. What a disappointment, or was it? Let's take a look at what's officially been announced and how this will affect the watch market. So I think it's only right that we do address the elephant in the room that is the 18 karat yellow gold deep sea 44 millimeter new release from Rolex this year. It has a flat blue looking bezel and dial. For you guys that don't know, they used to do a Submariner back in the day. It used to have a flat blue and it had quite a short run and they produced it on the Submariner steel and yellow gold and also the Submariner full gold. We've actually had some of those in at LWC, but this particular one for me from Rolex is a curveball. If I was to say to you, pick a model that Rolex produces and let's make it gold, one that you would never ever think, that is that watch. And I honestly think there's not gonna be much demand for that watch. Who is the buyer? for that watch, considering it is a diver's watch. Would you dive in that watch? Absolutely not. Would I dive in that watch? One million percent no. It is such a big watch. It is a 44 millimeter in size, big deep case, really wide diameter on the case, wide bracelet, wide clasp, only the retail of 45,000 pounds in the marketplace, unless they do like a limited release, which they could do and try and keep the price high. I genuinely think that model predicted over the next six to 12 months could actually be worth less than retail. Historically, the big gold pieces. Yes, it is a new release. Yes, obviously it's something different to the market. But for me personally, I actually don't know who the buyer is for that watch. I think the next one we have to discuss is obviously the Sky Dweller, the rose gold and yellow gold. Rolex has produced a Jubilee bracelet for this particular model. They're already doing it on the steel one. They're already doing it on the steel and gold one. I think it's a bit weak from Rolex considering the big changes we had last year with the Daytona range. Historically, we do have a weaker year than one after, but I think they could have done a lot more with that particular model. Throwing a Jubilee on, for me personally, makes it a very busy watch, especially in the rose or yellow gold. The dial combinations are nice, but historically, let's look where the market is on that particular one. They are now commanding a less than retail price for that. They brought out this Jubilee bracelet. I'm not sure it's gonna be that well balanced. When you look at that watch, you've got a big, heavy gold watch case, and then you've got the Jubilee, which is a lot more delicate. Yes, it works on the steels. Yes, it works on the steel and gold. On the full gold, I'm not convinced. Will it be in demand? Yes, of course, it'll be in demand. Will it carry a premium over retail? I'm not convinced. The current Rolex market on the big gold pieces is a little soft. Let's see how it goes. But for me personally, from Rolex, I think that is a little bit weak. So let's discuss the 1908, a model historically that's not had that much demand in the marketplace. This particular dial has got the beautiful ice blue color. It's actually got a motif style to it. I think they call it the rice grain motif on the official Rolex website. It's got the super thin platinum case and the open display case back, also on the leather strap. Retail price around about 25K. I think this watch is gonna do really well in the open market going forward over certainly the next six to 12 months, I think it'll be high demand to get a platinum model from Rolex, a bit of a nod to the Patek Philippe style with an open display case back, I think is gonna be absolutely stunning and sought after and I can't wait to see one in the flesh. Let's move on to what I think is gonna be the most requested watch from Rolex's 2024 release this year and it is the GMT Master II the stainless steel model, a bit of a nod to the old 116710LN, and it's got the two-tone bezel like the gr &R, as we know was released from Rolex last year. This particular one comes on the Oyster and Jubilee bracelet. I would go for the Jubilee bracelet. I think that is the sweet spot for that watch, but I think that's gonna be extremely in high demand. Is it enough from Rolex in that category for me personally? No, I think they could have done a lot more. You know, they could have discontinued the Pepsi, discontinued the Sprite, bought out a right-hand drive Sprite. I think it's a little bit weak from Rolex, not saying I don't like it, because I do. The GMT range could have had a lot more work put into it, and they wouldn't have to actually do a lot to make them changes. You know, the parts are already on the shelf. All they have to do is change the combinations. Yes, we've not seen the coat. Yes, obviously the Pepsi's not gone, all these sort of things. I think that is a cracking, cracking watch. I think it'd be really in demand and I can see a lot of people wanting to daily that watch. So the retail price from Rolex is just under 10,000 pounds for this particular model. As we all know, when the new releases come out from Rolex, it will take three to six months before they hit the marketplace. Look at the gr &R last year, that did exactly the same. I think it's gonna be trading for around about 15 or 16,000 pound retail on the gray market. I think it'll be extremely in high demand 
when it first hits the market. There will be some dealers out there that will put it up at high prices when it hits the market. They're going to be asking in what I expect circa £20,000, which is double retail. In my opinion, I just don't think that's the right price point for the market. I do believe that some, some dealers may just try and get that higher number, considering you can get a Pepsi for cheaper, which is more iconic, obviously, and a lot more history of that model. And I think mid-teens is a nice sweet spot. It's a new model from Rolex. Yes, it's sort of over retail, but how many percent is that? It's not 100%, I'd say more like 40%, 50%. That for me is where that model needs to be and I think it'll settle around the mid-teens. Let's move into the Daytona range. One of my favorite, if not the favorite for me personally, I want to talk about the gem set pieces. For you guys that don't know, a gem set piece from Rolex is a factory diamond set watch. What is different from Rolex this year is they have made the gem set Daytonas, i.e. diamond dials, diamond bezels including round brilliant diamonds and baguettes and also diamond shoulders on the Daytona range available on the website. If you go onto the Rolex website, you can configure the gem set Daytonas. Now they have always been a off catalog piece. You have to order them off catalog. It was always a POA or actually it is not on the website. For example, the rainbow Daytona that came in, the yellow, white, and rose gold, but that particular one with the rainbow colored stones on the bezel, obviously diamond set shoulders. We all know the prices there hit sort of 500 to a million in the peak of the market. These were never ever on the Rolex website. These particular models now can be configured. For example, the rose gold, full bracelet, Sunder style, baguette diamond markers, baguette bezel and it's got the diamond shoulders. I think the retail's around 100, 108. What a watch that is. Can I see the buy for that watch? I think it's a very small market. There will be people that request that watch. Will it hit the rainbow numbers? I'm not too sure. Will it carry a premium? Yes. Will it maintain a premium? I actually think it will. Any gem set piece from Rolex, and we all know Rolex produced the best stones and they're hand-picked for their gem set diamond set watches. They are the most whitest, brilliant diamonds. If you, any of you guys have the opportunity to see a gem set watch from Rolex, a factory set, they are absolutely stunning and one of my favorites. The only thing that's confusing for me is, look at the Eye of the Tiger, one of my personal favorites in the Oysterflex range. They've now produced some Oysterflex combinations. For example, they've got the yellow gold one with the diamond shoulders baguette bezel and also the diamond dial. What a watch that is. I would love to have one of them in the boutique, but they've also brought out like a mother of pearl in the white gold with some Tahitian sub dials, again, stunning models. But why have Rolex started producing them and putting them on the Rolex website? Is it a sign of the times and the buyers are just not there for the gem sets anymore? I'm not too sure, time will tell, but you know, what I've been saying to you guys on the channel, we want to see more dials, more combinations, more gem set. And for me in the Daytona range, I think they have ticked a lot of them boxes, but will the market be big for that particular models? I'm not too sure. And the one that you guys probably don't know about is one that I've actually got on my phone here, and it is the 18 carat yellow gold Le Monde Daytona. It has the beautiful black dial with the white sub dials, a bit of a nod to the old Paul Newman. That watch is absolutely stunning. Will we see any of those this year? I'm not convinced. Look at the Le Monde, the white gold one that was discontinued this week. Very short run, very limited numbers, hardly any on the marketplace. They carried a huge premium when they came out. They then dropped around about, I would say, 150K on the grey market. That watch, since it's been discontinued, is now shot to way over 200K. And I think it'll just keep rising due to the limited numbers on that one. But the new yellow gold, one, I think is going to be so sought after. I think it could even carry a higher premium than the white gold one, just purely because how beautiful it is. And I think hopefully clients who buy that will, will daily or certainly wear that watch. That would be really nice to see. But I did actually have a call from a client last week who was collecting the Le Monde, the white one, just before it was discontinued. He's not called me back. Hopefully at some point he'll remember and pick the phone up. I'm still here. I'd still like to buy it. Of course, I'm gonna have to up my offer, but if you're watching, please call me. Hope you enjoyed this video. YouTube thinks you should watch this video next.